This is Marketplace. You should feel safe in this school. A cross-country test, the first of its kind. This teacher was thrown back into a classroom with new kids. What's kept secret about your kid's teacher? What was your reaction? Upset. I thought the school didn't really care. Secret files, dangerous teachers. He asked me to go on webcam and just spill something on myself. Who's looking after your child? This is your marketplace. Across the country, we all remember our favorite teacher. Uh, Mrs. Gamble in grade five. Mr. Jugovac. Miss Wall, my English teacher. My favorite teacher was Calvin DeGo. Someone who changed our lives for the better. And she really got me into reading with the first Harry Potter book. She's the one who got me to like math. She was just an amazing woman, and she was a great teacher. Get out of my room! <laughs> but a negative experience in the classroom can be just as long-lasting. Go to the calm down chair and sit. So what does happen when there's a bad apple in the classroom? To find out, we're grading each province on the information they share about teachers, creating our own unofficial report card. What we find will shock you. First stop, Fredericton, New Brunswick. Carly's in grade nine and on most days likes going to school, but that wasn't always the case. It felt like I had a book bag of bricks on my back. Like I felt stressed, I felt worried, I felt endangered. I felt like it was just me and the other students in my class and like I couldn't do anything. I wanted to do anything to get out of school. I wanted to like hurt myself. I didn't want to go to school at all. Carly's fear is fueled by a bully. She says it's not a fellow student, it's her elementary teacher. Here's what she remembers. She would yell and scream at us. She would also cuss sometimes. Sometimes she hit kids' fingers with a ruler, or she would tap them with a cane, and it just wasn't OK. Do you uh, want peanut butter on celery? Yes, please. OK. Carly tells her mom, Gina Merrill. At first, she's not convinced. We all had mean teachers growing up who, you know, really, in hindsight, weren't that bad. And I kept telling her, you know, Carly, it's not that bad. Get through school, it's OK. But soon, Gina realizes Carly's not OK. That school year, she missed 41 days of school. She would have headaches constantly, bad, bad headaches, stomach aches. I had taken her to uh, the emergency room one point in time where she uh, was just, the pains were so bad in her stomach, and anything I did didn't help. Desperate, Gina turns to the school for help. So I approached the teacher first, spoke to her myself. I then went to the principal and vice principal. Nothing changes, so Gina writes directly to New Brunswick's education minister. That leads to an investigation, and Carly's teacher is found guilty of unprofessional and inappropriate conduct. But the details are vague. Can you read me the letter you got? Sure. The complaint has determined to be founded under Category 2, misconduct. Please be advised that the appropriate action has been taken. What was the appropriate action? I don't know. What was your biggest concern, Gina? That there was going to be other kids that went through with what my daughter went through. Gina's worried. She wants to know if other parents will ever know what happened. She calls New Brunswick's Department of Education to find out. Hi. Hi. Is there any way to obtain any information on my daughter's teacher? Oh, unfortunately, we're not allowed to share this information. No, oh. not in New Brunswick. That's no. private information. Private in the public education system? Here's where we put teacher transparency to the test. Hi there, I'm calling to find out what information you share on teacher disciplines in Prince Edward Island. Each province and territory regulates its own teachers, so we call each one. Hi there, I'm wondering what information you share on teacher disciplines in Nunavut. Over and over again, we're told that information is completely private. We think secrecy like that deserves a failing grade. So on our unofficial national report card, we're giving a majority of provinces and territories an F. 
Saskatchewan and Alberta, they pass, but with a D. They'll release some data, but it's minimal or hard to access. To learn how all this secrecy affects kids in the classroom, we head to Halifax, Nova Scotia. It's home to the Ames Institute, a think tank on education where we find the perfect tutor. Paul Bennett's been a teacher, principal, and school superintendent. Hey, Dr. Bennett. He now studies teacher discipline. He thinks we need more openness. Public access would significantly improve the system. It would make everyone much more attuned to the importance of performing well, and it would give those teachers that are doing a great job, and that's the majority of them, some confidence. What do you think we should be able to find out? Whether teachers have had any uh, current or past uh, indiscretions, whether they've been found guilty of any uh, offenses, and what have, steps have been taken to try to remediate those. Information like that might be good for parents, but what do teachers think of their records being public? After school, we catch up with Toronto second grade teacher Megan Bruni. Um, I think they should have access. I mean, the parents do need to give the trust and they should, they should um, wonder what's happening at school. Would public uh, accountability, public access make better teachers? It would, because the teachers would be held more responsible and accountable for their jobs. And with that accountability, the teachers would be more inclined. There's more of an incentive to do, to do well, to do your best. She should know. In the province where she works, parents do have access to teacher records. Turns out only two provinces make that information public, Ontario and BC. Both have public online databases. You can enter your teacher's name and then see if they've been disciplined before. Transparency like that is worth extra credit. So our unofficial report card gives both Ontario and British Columbia a B. Why not an A? Because transparency alone isn't keeping troubled teachers out of the class. Oliver, don't forget your book bag. Just ask this Toronto mom and her 12-year-old son. Here. Let's get going, OK? When Mimi Choi dropped Oliver off at school, she had no idea his teacher had been in trouble before for physical abuse on three other kids. Now Oliver is coming forward with his story. What did Oliver tell you happened? He told me that uh, he was going back to his class after recess. He saw the teacher coming down the hall. And when they met at the doors, the teacher grabbed his shoulders and pushed him and Oliver hit his head on the door. Mimi can't believe it. The principal calls in police and children's aid. Hi, Oliver. I'm Rob. I'm a police officer. They interview Oliver to assess what happened. So he pushes you across here, and then your head hits this side of the door. Yeah. Does that make sense? So this side of your head? Yeah. Police don't lay charges. They tell Mimi there's not enough evidence of intentional assault. But for Oliver, a line was crossed. How did you feel being treated like that by a teacher? Surprised, shocked. On Mimi's request, we're not showing his face. Had anybody ever shoved you like that before? Not your friends? No. Certainly not an adult? No. The school does remove the teacher from class, but won't say for how long. What was it like when you didn't know if he was coming back or not? I was kind of scared and nervous and I was hoping that he wouldn't come back. Mimi's anxious too, so she begins some detective work of her own, starting with Ontario's teacher database. What she reads shocks her. The teacher's discipline record with details of the three previous incidents. Pulled the ear of one young student, held the arms of another, and touched or squeezed a third around the neck. The teacher insists he in no way intended to cause harm. And what did you think when you discovered that this teacher had been found guilty of physically mistreating kids before? It was both horrible and I guess a little gratifying because it confirmed, you know, what Oliver had experienced, that this was a pattern. For those offenses, the college suspends the teacher for 20 days and orders counseling in anger management. Whatever courses he took have done nothing, as far as I can tell. 
and didn't understand that it was a sexual thing. Broken trust, dangerous teachers. Sharpen your pencil, this is your marketplace. Our unofficial report card on teacher transparency has given nine provinces and territories a failing grade for keeping teacher discipline secret. Two provinces do share information, BC and Ontario, but there's room for improvement. It can take years to determine if a teacher is guilty. Two students in Toronto learned that the hard way. We're bringing them together for a reunion. Carmen North and Daniel Gray are now in their 20s. How's it going? Hi. Nice to see you. They haven't seen each other in almost 10 years. Thanks for coming today. Yeah. Back in junior high, they attended class with the same popular teacher. What was Mr. Bradford like? As a teacher, I guess you could say he was considered a cool teacher. He was very outgoing. I felt very comfortable around him. He made jokes and he was kind of more of a, a friendly figure than a teacher figure. I really liked him a lot. Gavin Bradford taught music when Carmen was in grade seven and Danielle in grade eight. He befriended both students inside class and out. He noticed I was like a bit of like an outcast. And so he would say, you know, you and me, we're different. People don't understand us. It really did start off just establishing uh, a relationship of trust. He brought up the fact that if you added him on MSN, which was the messenger back in the day, um, that he would send you um, kind of school assignments. And being a teenager in my head, I thought that was cool. But the more they talked, the more disturbing the conversations became. He would always ask me, do you have any secret ambitions in life? And I thought that was a strange thing to ask. And he would tell me that his secret ambition was to hit a student in the face with a pie. And then uh, he asked me if he could hit me in the face with a pie. The messages often centered around food and veered from bizarre. I'll give you a perfect mark if you let me buy you. To sexual. And he said, maybe I could spill something on you. Maybe I could spill coffee on you or water. And then he asked me, like, oh, maybe wear a white shirt tomorrow. Was there ever anything more than chatting? Did he ever send videos or pictures or did you? He started asking me to go on webcam and he asked me to go on webcam and just spill something on myself. He, he was, he pressured me about it. He definitely like wouldn't let it go. He's persistent. Yeah, yeah, very. Carmen keeps the webcam off, so does Danielle. But they're not the only students Gavin Bradford is talking to. And Mr. Bradford was actually speaking to 21 different students. Did you know that? I didn't know that. I didn't either. All 21 students are female. Are you home alone? Turn on your webcam. If you could fill a bathtub with something messy, what would it be? Will you record yourself getting messy for me? You're really young, you're not you know, full teenagers yet. How did you feel when you read this? I knew that there was something off about it. And at the same time, I didn't really understand the magnitude of the situation. Well, just really confused because, I mean, I just feel like if it had been a few years later, I would have thought immediately, okay, this is wrong. Carmen tells her mom she takes a copy of those messages straight to the principal. Apparently, the principal went white in the face, completely shocked and upset about it, and then he was gone the next day. Bradford's gone from the school, but it's up to the Ontario College of Teachers to decide if he'll lose his teaching certificate for good. For Carmen and Danielle, it's an open and shut case. They don't expect a decision to take long. So how many teachers have lost their certificates? That's mostly a secret too. So through Canada's access to information laws, we request records of all teachers who've had certificates revoked going back 10 years. The process takes months, but eventually a national picture emerges. Interesting. 
On average, 40 teachers lose their certificates each year. Those numbers should be a lot higher, according to education expert Paul Bennett. We know that there is more incidents going on than are publicly reported, and we have uh, very good evidence that um, many of the cases are buried. The numbers we uncover are all over the map. In the past decade, some provinces and territories have revoked nearly 200 certificates. Others, as few as zero. Details reveal teachers losing certificates for verbal, psychological, and emotional abuse, viewing child pornography on school computers, physical violence, indecent exposure, and sexual assault. Well, that's one of the reasons we need serious reform. And we need a process that ensures the public that serious infractions or acts of indiscipline or uh, worse uh, are not tolerated in the school system. Teacher Megan Bruni agrees. It's very difficult to be fired as a teacher, which I think is silly. I mean, I'm lucky that I have a job. There's a whole lot of teachers trained out there that don't have work that are enthusiastic and would do an excellent job. So I think it's more frustrating to know that there's ineffective teachers in the job cell while they're waiting to get work. Failing system. So the Ontario College of Teachers ever contacted either of you? No. You were never interviewed? No. We fight for answers. Real learning coming right at ya. This is Marketplace. Most provinces keep information on educators who've been disciplined secret, including New Brunswick, where Carly's elementary teacher was found guilty of misconduct. Her mom, Gina Merrow, believes the teacher is gone for good until she receives a message on Facebook from a mom with a daughter in a different school. This person said that um, her daughter was going through a very similar situation, wanted to know if it was the same teacher. It was the same teacher. The exact same teacher. I was floored. This teacher was thrown back into a classroom with new kids, new parents, nobody knew maybe of the story, um, and she was doing it all over again. Moving teachers around is a dirty secret in the school system. Tell me about this term, passing the trash. So a pattern exists where teachers that are troublesome, are having trouble with the kids, or have uh, uh, collecting parent complaints get passed on to another school. It also conceals from the public what's actually happening. In Toronto, Oliver's teacher moved to his school after being disciplined for physically abusing three students where he taught before. After his run-in with Oliver, the teacher's gone for the rest of the year. But now they're told he'll be back in September. What was your reaction? Upset. I thought the school didn't really care. I didn't like, want to have any interaction with him. Not wanting her son to face the teacher again, Mimi pulls him from the school. And you had to leave, not the teacher. Right. And for you, that's the worst part. Mm-hmm. The outcome still brings tears. I have some tissues if you want. And Oliver's not the only one getting upsetting news. When Carmen and Danielle were in junior high, their teacher, Gavin Bradford, was caught sending sexual messages to 21 female students, including them. The Ontario College of Teachers investigates to determine if his teaching certificate should be revoked. But Carmen and Danielle hear nothing. So the Ontario College of Teachers never contacted either of you? No. You were never interviewed? No. Did they ever talk to your parents? No. Finally, almost five years later, they've graduated by the time headlines on their food fetish teacher hit the news. The story became an international scandal. The Ontario College of Teachers eventually found Bradford guilty of sexual abuse and revoked his certificate, but too late. He's already been teaching in Scotland for at least two years. The almost five years between the complaint coming forward and his certificate being revoked, there was nothing to let anybody know what had happened to you or to you or to 19 other girls. It's not right. I mean, he basically got a fresh start. There should be faster movement because there's a huge difference between somebody coming with allegations and here's the conversation with a teacher in your school board. 
We asked the Ontario College of Teachers about the Bradford case. They won't comment on specific files, but do say their timelines for action are improving. Let's check on that. We review the college's last 100 cases and find the amount of time from incident to decision is just shy of four years. For teacher Megan Bruni, that's too long for students and the accused. There's the possibility that if the teacher is guilty of that wrongdoing, then they're still working in the classroom with children. And then if the teacher is not guilty, they have that hanging over their head or are not working. Um, and their reputation is on the line for that amount of time. Mimi's also worried about time. Six months ago, she filed her own complaint with the Ontario College of Teachers. They've just told her they need more time to investigate. Mimi's not waiting around. Have a great day. Bye. Oliver's already enrolled in his new school. There are some hopeful signs of change across the country. Saskatchewan just uploaded their own online database of teachers. It won't reveal past findings, but future disciplines will be posted. And in New Brunswick, the Department of Education tell us they're now reviewing the information they make public. Too late for Carly, but she's learning to trust teachers again. Phys Ed, how are you doing there? Good, we started square dancing. A square dancing? Yes. <laughs> Now she wants to do what she can to help fellow students. Carly, why did you decide to talk to us? I feel like you'll be able to get the message out and like show that we should have like a voice. 